We've just shown in the preceding unit that the derivative of a product is not the derivative or the product of the derivatives. So is there something we can do with the derivative of a product? That's what we're going to explore in this unit. As we usually do, we try to think about the derivative as the instantaneous rate of change and see if we can represent the quantities involved in some terms that are familiar to us. For instance, here we have h of x equals the product of f of x and g of x. Are we familiar with something that's the product of two other things that we can express? Yeah, I mean, we've done this before already. If we look at a rectangle, if we think of h of x as the area of a rectangle with side f of x and side g of x, then h of x is the product of f of x and g of x. So this rectangle gives us a good representation so we can think about if x changes, that makes f change, that makes g change, how does that change h? That's what we're after, and then we'll go for the instantaneous rate of change. So let's look at that particular thing. If I change x by some amount, then f changes. Let's call that delta f. Remember, delta is the standard notation for a change in something, and g changes by some amount. Now look, in this picture, I've drawn it as if both f and g increase, okay, by different amounts. But because x changes, it doesn't mean that f gets bigger or g gets bigger. One might get smaller, the other bigger. They both might get bigger, they both might get smaller. So you have to convince yourself that the picture works in all those cases, and it does. But again, the main point here is the picture is going to suggest to us what the answer is, and later we'll prove it exactly. So here in this representation, x changes by a little bit. That causes f to change, that causes g to change. So what can we say about the change in h? Well, we can see the change in h is made up of these three rectangles here. Let's write down explicitly what the area is for all three of those. Here on the right, the dark green one, it's the change in f times the original amount of g. That's this, change in f times the original amount of g. And here the light green one on the top, it's the change in g times the original amount of f. That's this term here, f times delta g. And then in the corner, we've got the yellow one. That's the rectangle. It's the change in f times the change in g. Now, as we did with x squared and x cubed, we notice that some of the parts are really bigger than the other parts. If I shrink x down, that is, I shrink the change in x down, the change in f will get small, the change in g will get small. And when you do that, you can see that really the yellow rectangle, the one that's delta f times delta g, that's really small because that shrinks in two dimensions. These green ones, yeah, they shrink in one dimension each, but they still have one dimension that stays the same delta f times full amount of g. Even though delta f gets small, g stays the same. Even though delta g gets small, f stays the same. So really, most of the change in the area, almost the entire change, is taken up by the greenish rectangles. And that's more and more true the smaller x's. So we can write, as we've done before, this change as an approximation. Delta h is pretty much the area of the dark green rectangle, which is delta f times the full amount of g plus the area of the light green rectangle, which is the full amount of f times delta g. And that approximation gets better and better the closer delta x gets to zero. All right, that's the change in h, the change in the area in the picture. What we want is the rate of change, so we have to divide both sides by delta x. All right, and it's delta x we're dividing by because here, we're trying to find the derivative of h with respect to x. So we divide everything by delta x. Now look what we have on the right side delta f over delta x, that's the average rate of change of f. Delta g over delta x, that's the average rate of change of g. So if we take the limit as delta x approaches 0, that's what we need to make this average rate of change become the derivative. These things also become derivatives, like this. Take the limit as delta x approaches 0, we get the derivative of h with respect to x, that's what we're looking for, h prime of x, is the instantaneous rate of change of f compared to x, the derivative of f times g, plus f times the derivative of g. So we do have a pretty simple, maybe not as simple as we hope, but a pretty simple rule for how to take the derivative of a product. And I'll write that in general here. The derivative of a product, f times g, is you take the derivative of the first factor, you leave the second one alone, and you add to that, now leave the first one alone, take the derivative of the second factor. And look, you know, adding, you can do either way. 
adding is commutative. That's the official way to say it. I could write this term first, I could write that term first, doesn't matter. Multiplication is commutative, I can do it either way. I could put this first, that first, doesn't matter. But it's important for your own sake when you're going to use the product rule to get it down in one particular way. So let's always try to do it this way so you don't get the factors mixed up. So always write it this way. The product rule, the derivative of a product, take the derivative of the first factor, leave the second one alone. Add to that, leave the first one alone, take the derivative of the second. You're going to use the product rule lots of times in calculus. We'll have a module a little later on showing you how to use it and letting you practice that stuff. Now, one other important point to make here, or technical point anyway. Here in this picture I suggested that when delta x gets smaller, delta f gets smaller and delta g gets smaller. Turns out that's true, but there's a little bit of proof required there. I'll address that issue a little more when we talk about the official proof of the product rule in the next episode.